This is the second part of Lesson 7.5. We're now going to look at applications of systems and qualities. And what we're looking is for the next lesson, in which we're going to look at more applications, something um, that we're going to do right now, the first idea, is, comes from economics. It is called, the idea is, consumer surplus and produces surplus. So, what are they? Consumer surplus is the measure of the amount that consumers would have, would have been willing to pay above what they actually pay, and produces surplus is a measure of the amount that producers would have been uh, willing to accept to receive below what they actually receive. So like I said, those are concepts from economics. Where does the math come in? Let's see. To figure out the consumer surplus and the um, producer surplus, the first thing that you want to do is you want to draw the demand curve, which is a line, the supply curve, which is also a line, and find the equilibrium point. The equilibrium point is the point where the demand and supply curve intersect. This is the point where all the units produced are sold. And so, once you find this point, the equilibrium point, what you do is you draw a horizontal segment that intersects the y-axis. After drawing the horizontal segment, what you have done is form two right triangles. The area of the triangle that is below the demand curve, but above this horizontal line, is called the consumer surplus. The area of the triangle shaded in red that is below the horizontal line, but above the supply curve, is known as producer surplus. So this is the math part. Now we're going to actually do an example to see how to figure out consumer and producer surplus. So I'm going to need to erase the board. I'm going to need a little bit of room. And so let's read the problem. The demand and supply functions for a new type of personal digital assistant are P is equal to 150 minus whatever, and then P is equal to 60 plus, as you can see, 0.0002x, where P is the price in dollars, and X represents the number of units. We want to find the consumer surplus and the producer surplus for these two equations. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to find a point of intersection of the demand curve and the supply curve. We're going to do that by using substitution. So we've got 150 minus 1 100,000x equals 60 plus to 100x, 100,000 x. So 0.002x. We're going to add 0.0001x to both sides. And we're going to subtract 60 from both sides. On the left side, we get 90. On the right side, you get 0 0.00003x. We divide. Better we are being to multiply by 100,000. But we divide, we do possess calculators. And so 90 divided by 3 100,000 is equal to 3 million. So 3 million is equal to x. So now we know the units produced. We also want to know the price. So we take one of the equations. I'm going to take the one for supply. And I'm going to write P is equal to 60 plus 0 0.0002 times 3 million. So 
there we go. We multiply the two and we get that P is equal to 120. So we know the price and we know the number of units produced. So we have 3 million comma, better not put the commas here so that it can all confuse you, comma 120. This is our equilibrium point. I'm going to keep erasing here. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to graph the two equations. We draw the y-axis, we draw the x-axis. On the x-axis we have the number of units. I'm just going to say 1, 2, 3. This is in millions. So in millions. And this, like I said, represents number of units. The y-axis is the price. We're going to measure the price in dollars. For the y-axis, we're going to go by 10. So 10, 20, 30, I think it was bad as the zero. Let's uh, not go by 10. We're going to go actually by 20. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180, and 200. We're going to start by plotting the demand curve. So if you look at the demand curve, it is all the way over here. We will notice that for the demand curve, I'm only interested in one point, that its y-intercept is at 0, 150. 0, 150. So I'm going to plot the point 0, 150 and 3 million comma 120. So 0 comma 150 and 3 million comma 120. To the best of my ability, I'm going to now draw the demand curve. Now we're going to move on to the supply curve. For the supply curve, we notice that our y-intercept is the point 0, 60. So when x is 0, p will be 60. So there it is, 0, 60. And for this one, we're going to also use the point 3 million, 120. 0, 6, 3 million, 120. Again, to the best of our ability, we draw the supply curve. And this point is important. I'm just going to put 3, even though we know it's small. Let's put 3 million. There we go. Comma, 120. The blue triangle represents the consumer surplus. This is the consumer surplus. While the red triangle, the area of the red triangle, I should say, represents the producer. So plus. All we want to do now is find their areas and then we are done. So let's remember what those points
And so this can work here to 0, 150. This point clearly is 0, 120. Let's find the consumer surplus. Area of a triangle is equal to 1 half times base times height. It is equal to 1 half times what is the base of this triangle? It starts at zero, goes to three million, so times three million times. What is the height? We're going from 120 all the way to 150, so a height of 30. This is 90 million, half of 90 million is 45 million. So this is the consumer surplus, the area of the blue triangle. What about the producer? We're going to do everything exactly the same. So producer surplus. Area is still going to be one and a half times base times height. The base is still the same. Both the blue and the red triangle share the same base. So the base is still going to be 3 million. So here we go, 1 half times 3 million. The height is from 0, 0,60 to 0,120. So the height is 60. And so this is going to be equal to 90 million. And that's it. This is how you figure out consumer and producer surplus. And it should be worth a lot.